like mini Nar is easy to play and mega Nar is easy to play right? okay. it's, the, it's the combination of the two that i think is difficult whereas um being able to understand when you can take advantage of the invulnerability of shifting into uh from pled onto his onto skull is um is very difficult very high skill cap champion so we'll get to see how proficient kickers is on the club are we going to expect to see Memento and Amazing putting time up here? Or is it a, a matchup that Kled should just naturally win so that Amazing's not really going to focus up towards the top side too much? I don't think that Kled will innately win it. I think that he will, once he gets a few items under his belt, have more pushing capabilities and be better at trading. Um, but early on, it doesn't necessarily go heavily in the favor of Kled just because of, because of his severe lack of weight put. Pretty slow start from both these teams. We haven't seen a first blood within the first minute, so obviously this isn't the uh, sort of more chaotic fight style we saw from the but I feel like as, few games. as we progress through the series, both teams have actually just uh, improved and have become less chaotic. Like, at the very first game was 50 minutes, and it was like, throw left, right, and center. In game two, uh, there were just a couple of throws here and there. Now, we might be seeing first blood going in the favor of no one. As, uh, you have to hit the sonic wave yep. to be able to get the first blood. He tries to go for a gang mid, like the creative pathing. Um, but isn't quite able to land it. So good pressure regardless from Fnatic Academy early on into the game. both all the summoners down in the mid lane. But the important thing to remember is that Memento does not impact his lanes at all. Uh, notice that Memento, he's just about to clear out his red. He gets zoned away. And the great thing about Kickers coming in here is while he doesn't actually assist, And once again, we see a vision game being played. Bot bottom side of the jungle belongs to Giants. Top side to Fnatic. Giant Knight is caught out here. Amazing there. Shockwave comes down, but Amazing will chase him out. 
Second kill of the game on the Lee Sin. Amazing's making waves. I like the pressure that Amazing is exerting on the mid lane because one of the big weaknesses that Oridana does have is that she's got no innate mobility or innate escapes, which means that when her summoners are down, she is just this big, juicy target that's waiting to be ganked. And when you have a Syndra and a Lee Sin, you should look to abuse that as often as you possibly can. So a lot of really good plays being made around the mid lane, which is, um, I think that it's unfortunate that the kills are going on to Amazing, but Niski's still reaping some of the benefits in terms of CS advantage, as well as an experience lead, and it's forcing Knight to go very early into Merc Treads during the lane phase. Something we've seen him do a lot is that sort of defensive itemization. After the first game with the Ari, he's been very defensive in his builds. And my mind, my mind comes back to sort of before these games and when we were discussing who was going to get picked out of these Challenger Series teams. And a lot of us thought perhaps Misfits Academy looked like perhaps the weaker team because Pride Stalker is a little bit easier to shut down. Giants actually chose to play against Fnatic Academy. In this first game, they had the option of which team they were going to play, and they said, we'll take on Fnatic. We think we can beat them. That is coming back to bite them now. The color is going to come in from Hiku, immediately exhausted, flashed forward for that. He'll use by Marlis to get himself out. Damn, Hiku. Yeah. That was uh, an angry flash. <laughs> he really wanted to try and get the kill down. You can see that with the Lucian pick, he's decided that he wants to try and net more advantages during the laning phases. Ooh, that's a really good trade for Kikis. Yeah, Depth Charge comes back up. Actually, Flaxis engaged this. Kikis will just push the wave once again and then back away. And it, it should have enough gold to look towards that Tiamat or the start of his item build, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, so Black Cleaver, Tiamat is the usual conventional build path. But I want to come back to the point that you made um, when we talked to Fnatic this morning about what, would, what did they think about Giants choosing them? They were very surprised and they felt very confident. Yeah. Uh, they thought that, or they feel the Misfits Academy is actually the weaker team of the two. Um, and they think that they were able to take advantage of the fact that Schalke had what was effectively a bad day and weren't a team that uh, could play on stage. They were really good in the LAN, uh, on, online environment. When moving to the stage, it was Misfits Academy that were actually able to come out on top. And so Misfits Academy felt like coming into this series that they would actually be able to shut down Giants and have a much easier path towards making it into the LCS. And while there certainly have been a few messy games, I still feel like throughout the series, Fnatic Academy have felt like the stronger team, purely because of how much more willing they are to try and make plays. Yeah. And so far in this early game, they've gotten themselves another really good start. They've taken the lead once again. And you have to remember that uh, in a lot of seasons past, the Challenger Series teams have been on a, a, a lower level than LCS, and they've never really looked to challenge, and we've seen consistently LCS teams getting back into the LCS, apart from one or two outstanding Origin, like Origin yeah. and Misfits. You know, they're sort of, they dominated the league and then they were able to win. This season was the most stacked season we have ever seen at Challenger Series. PSG there, Schalke there, Fnatic Academy, Misfits Academy, so many big names playing. You had previous world semi-finalists playing in the Challenger Series. Here you've got a Fnatic Academy squad who have four LCS veterans and a mid laner who has been around for a good couple of years in a competitive environment. They are not an inexperienced team. No. And I wonder if Giants just underestimated the fact that when they come to a LAN, when they come to the big stage, this Fnatic Academy team is going to show up. Uh, and I also think that when we were looking at the teams, uh one of the things that we discussed were our Fnatic a little bit too much of a one style yeah. player. One, three, one. Yeah, like I thought the one three one was pretty much the only style that they could play and win with because when you looked at them trying to fight PSG, um, they often really struggled, yeah. right? PSG would often come out ahead uh, largely because of the comp advantage that they have, but it was the fact that Fnatic were always being drawn into their playstyle, right? Uh, however, right now what we're seeing is Fnatic do have this variation. Amazing doesn't only camp Kikis. There are games where he puts a lot of emphasis around the entirety of the map. And this game, he's put a lot of focus onto helping Niski. And I think right now, it's proving a lot of benefit. Look, you can see a big CS discrepancy in the mid lane. The Syndra's transitioning nicely into the mid game. Uh, and now they're actually looking for a possible roam up top. Well, Amazing is here. They're going to look for the tower. They force Flaxish back already. A good gold lead for Fnatic Academy, and they might even look for the first tower. Now, Giants going deep, Hiku diving under the tower, Flaxis is here, he's teleported in, he's got to flash the wall, dredge line comes out, lands onto Kwai, they're going to get the kill, the shot they flashed away though, turret goes down in the top lane, Fnatic Academy playing across the map here. They'll give up their tower in the bot, but they'll put pressure in mid, and they might even look for a tier two in that top lane. Really good play coming out from the Giants, uh, from the uh, Giants squad in the bottom half of the map. But the fact that Fnatic Academy could get themselves that tier one tower on the top will give them a lot of pressure, maybe even make a play in mid. Well, Giants have got a flank here. Knight's there. Amazing. It would be a 3v2. Of course, there is the charge to come in from Kikis if he wants to join the fight. 
I've discussed this with stress before. If uh, an ultimate name has an exclamation mark at the end, you have to say it in that way. So it's Super Mega Death Rocket, charge. You have, to, you have to make to... sure. Oh, charge. Yeah, I'll charge. And nah. Like, you can't you can't say nah. Just like, oh, yeah, he's used nah. Oh, nah. You have to be like, nah. Well, there's a color cast where I say, what an R. Beautiful ultimate. <laughs> Great use of his Q there. Exactly. Niski clears out the wave once again. Well, at the moment, Fnatic are at the front of the queue for their LCS spot. They need to win this game and then one more series against either Origin or Misfits Academy, depending who wins tomorrow. Of course, tomorrow, guys, make sure you're tuning in for that series. It starts at... 5 p.m. CEST once again. Mm -hmm. Misfits Academy taking on Origin. I think a lot of people are slating Misfits Academy perhaps as a one-hit wonder against Schalke, but I'm sure they'll bring out the big guns playing up against Xpeke's team. Well, for the time being, Fnatic Academy, everyone's eyes are on them as they're looking to round things out in a three for one with the way that the game has been going so far. They're looking poised to do so. But there's still a lot of the game left. Looking at the composition of Giants, they actually hit a pretty powerful mid-game spike. Uh, the Lucian looking to build, well, I think is a Black Cleaver second, and now Clyde face checking the brush. Yeah, Memento's there. Here comes EQ as well. Clyde not long for the rift. Taken down. Well, let's put some damage back, but just not enough at the moment from this Ezreal. Memento just taking advantage of the lack of vision coming out from Fnatic Academy. And now Hustlin being taken advantage of in the river as well. Flashes away from the Sonic Wave, trying to get down towards the rest of his team. Hiku's on his way up the wild boat. Niski there as well. Unleashed power, exhaust straight away. And actually, amazing is being called out. Chased into the pit, jumps out to the side. Here's the charge. Kick it onto Knight. Mr. Rollins gets the kill. Fnatic collapse superbly well on Giants and get themselves another kill. What was supposed to be a kill onto Hustlin for Fnatic Academy actually ends up in a kill tonight because of how swift the kick is can make his way from the top side of the map into that fight things were looking very bleak for Fnatic Academy after it took so long for them to even get hustling even remotely low when the shockwave was gone from night when he had nowhere left to run Fnatic Academy were very swiftly able to get themselves a kill and the mid tier one so much cleaner from Fnatic Academy as well and you can see they know when Kikis is on this split pusher, they want to get him as far ahead as possible. So what do they do? They get the Rift Herald. They got it for him on the Fizz last game. This game, they're going to give it to him on the Kled. We've seen how quickly he can react. Doesn't need the TP, can just charge him from the side. They get him this buff, and at the moment, I don't see how Flaxius deals with him in that split push role. Well, that's going to be one of the big answers because you really can't send Oriana off into a side lane. Giants are very much about grouping up as a five-man unit and forcing fights on the map. And given the deficit that they're at, they can't afford to try and fight right now. Just look at the item differential that you're seeing between Knight and uh, Niski. Morello Nomicon completed. Sorceress Shoes as well. No Morello's for Knight. There is a Blade of the Ruin King on HeQ, though. He's still doing work on this Lucian, yet to die this game. Trinity Force finish for Mr. Rales, though, so switching up that build slightly uh, as opposed to last game. Now, Infernal Drake is on the cards, and you can see Giants have once again set up vision around it. This is something they've done well throughout the series, garnering vision control around objectives before they want to go for the take. The question is, how are Fnatic going to answer? Right now, they do have control over the mid lane wave, so they can actually push this in as, oh, Giants go in. Amazing, hooked up, jumps away, though. Here's Rales off towards the side. It's a three-way pincer from Fnatic. The TP in towards the back. Kickis is here. Can't jump over that wall with Claire, but can come around and try and flank. No charge available for him for the moment. Infernal Drake still aggroed by Giants. Kickis on his way, looking for the fray. Flaxis tries to chuck, chuck the dredge line out, but can't quite connect. He's amazing, looking for the smite stuck. Steal away, doesn't get it. Giants take the fight. And now Knight caught out. He's unleashed power, he's dead. Kickis is here into four members of Giants. What can he do? He's caught Memento, pulled him back with the bear trap on a rope. Kickis just needs one more. Auto takes him down, and now Flaxis taken away from the side of the fight as well, has to flash. PQ actually getting chased down by Clyde, does get away from the Strangle Thorns, but Kickers is actually still looking for the flank. Flaxis is going to fall to Mr. Rales and amazing. Fnatic Academy take three kills, they lose the Dragon, but what can they get off this? Well, right now, their focus is on that mid lane tower. Remember, they were able to get mid priority before that Dragon even started. They pushed a minion wave all the way into that tower, and now they're looking to claim or reap the benefits after losing that Drake. Can't quite get that mid lane tower, of course. They have managed to solidify themselves a gold lead, though. 4,000 ahead, 16 minutes in. I think this is the largest lead we've seen early on from either of these two teams. And although Fnatic don't get the Infernal Drake, 
The fight afterwards went very well for them. We saw how they can play around those flank positions. And Fnatic Academy are playing much better around these neutral objectives. Bear in mind, their vision control was much better, moving towards the Dragon. And just look at the setup. There's the minion wave already being pushed down mid. Sure, they can't secure the smite, but they get a kill down on tonight. And the flank from Kikis is enough for Fnatic to feel confident to try and keep this fight going. EQ's already zoned off to the side, so there's very little risk of him uh, being collapsed upon. And just look at your minimap, you can see Amazing. He's already started to push down mid. If he hadn't gone for the chase onto Flaxish and instead started focusing on that tower, perhaps Fnatic Academy could have gotten there sooner. Instead, they go for the play, they get themselves a couple of extra kills, and overall, it's still a game for Fnatic. And I don't think they're going to be too displeased if they don't get themselves that tower. Not at all. Hiku and Hustling, though, is trying to set up for something here onto Mr. Rales. Perhaps, once again, we're going to see the Fnatic push against Fnatic. If Rales pushes too far forward, he will get caught out. Of course, he's flash in that last fight as well. Flies on his way up, will spot Memento, and now Mr. Rales will probably be a little bit safer as EQ pokes his head out of the bush. The wave's not quite here for Giants. There is a true shot barrage available from Rales if they want to just try and clear these minions as they get to the tower. Deciding against it for the time being, it just all evened out a little bit here. Fnatic happy to play a little bit of a waiting game, especially since they're very close to big items. See a needlessly large rod and a blasting wand on towards Niski. Black Cleaver completed on Kikis as well. So big spikes have been gained for Fnatic Academy, but they did actually get caught a little bit there. Um, by Giants on the rotation. They had like three members moving through the jungle. They had no one pushing mid, uh, which means that when Giants sent two, three members to the top side of the map, uh, Fnatic couldn't actually net anything else anywhere else on the map. They couldn't shove underneath the turret in the bottom lane because Flaxish was able to answer, and they had no real minion wave in the mid, so... Uh, unfortunate loss there for Fnatic in the top side of the map. will give Giants a little bit more gold, close the gap ever so slightly. But in terms of overall control, Fnatic's still in the lead. Good vision investment towards the bottom side of the map will result in them moving towards this tier one and look to try and set up a siege. You can see now, again, push in mid, Oriana has to answer. And there should be a window where Fnatic can start making movements down to the bottom side of the map. No teleport on Kickers at the moment, though, so it's a lot more difficult for them to make it. Flaxis can respond to this top lane push and still have his TP available. However, it looks like Fnatic Academy are just... They can't quite work out exactly where they want to be at the moment. There's no Baron. It's going to be up in 16 seconds. There's no Dragon. Mountain Drake is next on the card. But actually, they've just brought four members across. And it looks like this Tier 2 is going to fall. So another objective for them. Smart rotation play. It's the one. It's the 4-1 that we talked about in Picks and Bands. You, sometimes you have to go across to your one man because the enemy team doesn't expect you to be there. And it's, it's just one of those things where you have three waves pushing towards the enemy team, and then you just rotate to the closest one with as many members as you can, yeah. because Giants will always be forced to answer the minion wave that you've just pushed in. So Giants, they have to wave clear in the mid, they have to wave clear in the bot, which means that they cannot wave clear up in the top, especially against four members of Fnatic Academy, and that results in a clean tower take going in their favor. Something Fnatic have done really well this game and last game is isolate a member of Giants. Last game, it was Flaxish. We saw him basically 1-7, and seven, I believe, at the end of the game, just totally destroyed. This game, it's night on this Oriana. 0-4, continually getting ganked by Amazing early on and getting taken down because as soon as Niski gets ahead, we see no Negatron Cloak from Knight, no defense on him. We see a big spike from Niski early on, and it means he can just continually use that Unleashed Power to just chip away at night and chip away at his mental strength as well. The amount of times you die, you got to think that pays, you know, has a toll on you as a player. It definitely does. I mean, you're used to it, so... Oh, yeah, I, I really am. I mean, when I'm when I'm 0-6 in my, in my games, uh, on Orianna specifically, it can really be difficult to find the mental fortitude to come back into game. But I know that when I look down to the bottom half of the map, there's always that possibility of a carry. When I look over towards you, and I think maybe I need to look a little bit more to the right. There's the AD carry that can bring me to victory. And right now, Hiku is having a pretty good game. Uh, he is at a pretty significant advantage in terms of farm over Rales. He has completed the Blade of the Ruin King. So he's looking pretty strong at this point in time. That he is. Uh, Fnatic Academy will continue to extend their gold lead. 5,000 ahead now, or five and a half. And this is all they need to do, eke out small advantages bit by bit, continue to put Giants on the back foot. Giants do have a stronger late game than we've seen from them before with the Oriana, with the Lucian. However, you're playing into an Ezreal and a Syndra, who are very difficult to deal with later on. And the question I think now comes, how 
ready our giants to play a, a, a battle of attrition. <laughs> right. ha, ha, no, right. it's like it is. It's a, like giants can come into this and say, look, you know, Fnatic Academy. We think we'll take them. We think we'll beat them. We'll choose them out of the two teams. We think we're going to win this. And now we're in game four. They're yep. two one down. Yep. And mentally, you have to think, how strong are we? Compare them to Rocket, something we did earlier on. Manta Drake actually started here. I'll talk about that point in a second. Memento's going to jump in. Amazing. Kicks him back towards the team. Mr. Rollins hooked, but Flax is knocked back. Here's the culling. Memento gets the dragon once again, but he's going to get knocked up. Actually, Kick is chasing him down. Memento gets out a one for the dragon. Giants will take that trade at the moment. But look at the difference. Mountain and an Infernal Drake going in the favor of Giants versus only the Ocean of Fnatic Academy. But Fnatic Academy have killed the big tanky top laner in Flaxish. Smite is available for Memento, but Fnatic Academy, they're moving towards the Baron. It's a dangerous game to play when you're playing into an Oriana. That Shockwave is still so strong when you're all grouped up like this. And Giants are responding. This could be it, Fnatic's hopes for that LCS spot might ride on this decision. They've gone for Baron, Clyde called off, he's distracting. Fnatic actually gonna disengage, Clyde just ran straight into the team to try and distract them. And Fnatic Academy went away from the Baron, they decide they can't do it. It was a risky decision from Fnatic Academy, especially with Flaxish just respawning and having his teleport up available. This will give Giants priority over the mid lane. And these are those mid-game decisions that we're seeing from both teams, often being a little bit questionable. I understand the thought process from Fnatic as Rales, it's a chunk of damage, but I understand the logic, which is we've got a kill, their tank is gone, they can't engage on us, let's try and go for the Baron, maybe we can force a fight. But I don't think they're in a really prime position to, especially with TP already gone from Kikis, his ultimate was unavailable, and our Giants, they actually have priority around the Baron. If they go for this gamble, no, they're just going to invest around the vision and just for now be happy with the control that they've re-established. And this is the battle of attrition I was just talking about. How willing are Giants to sacrifice a man to take the dragon? How willing are they to try and get the fight even if they stop the Baron and lose a person? Are they ready to make those trades? Because that's what they have to do to get back into this game. It's worked for them thus far, getting a kill, being able to close out that gold lead just a little bit more, get themselves ever so slightly closer. Only 4,000 between the two teams, and we have seen, and you can see the pained look on Lozark's face. We have seen how close these games can be when we get towards that mid-game and later on in the game. I still think that for Giants, they have a very clear win condition of, of Storm. Uh, Oriana and Lucian have very good wave there, especially when paired up with the Graves. Their late game team fighting is very potent, and especially with the front line they have in, in Nautilus, there's no reason why Giants cannot win these team fights. And, and you can see here the reason why there's no way for Giants to win is because half of their team is stuck behind a wall. Um, so you're effectively in a two versus five. Uh, if you're Giants, and the fact that you're able to get a Dragon and only a one for one, uh, you only lose one member is actually pretty decent for you because you get that kill back later. Oh, Flaxus teleporting in here, perhaps looking for a flank. All of Fnatic are around, you don't want that fight for the moment. Giants will back away, once again trying to secure vision around that Baron pit. And we're starting to see the items even out ever so slightly. There's still a slight advantage for Niski in that mid lane, has finished the Luden's Echo, no Luden's Echo for Knight. He's on his way there. Amazing caught out though, Dredge line, gonna get knocked back and taken down by Memento. Is this the trigger the Giants need? Are they going to start the Baron up? They're gonna draw Fnatic into the fight. That's a really significant pick. There is no smite available for Fnatic, but could the power of Niski be enough to win the fight for Fnatic? Here comes Kikis into the back line. Flaxis locked up in the pit with the Strangled Thorns. He's gonna go low. Kikis jumps back in the wild. Growth keeps him alive. Now Kikis has to flash away. Niski there, unleashed power onto Hustling. Not enough. Shockwave flashed away from Exhaust down as well. Fnatic Academy stopped the Baron. It's bit by bit that both these teams are trying to find an advantage. They're not done yet. Memento taken out and Fnatic Academy get the jungle. And now it's Fnatic with the pick. Memento is going to be dead for at least another 30 seconds and look at Amazing. He's just respawned. He's making his way down the mid lane and it is now Fnatic's turn to put the pressure onto Giants. Well, it's going to be the mid lane tower falling. Fifth turret of the game for Fnatic Academy. Extends their gold lead once again to 6,000. Still a seesaw of a game here, but at the moment there seems to be a weight on Fnatic's side. Keeping them up, keeping them, well, keeping them down actually a seesaw if you put a weight on it. Um, maybe they want to be down on the seesaw. I don't think anyone wants to be down. I think everyone wants to be up, up well, and up. As there's some helium balloons on Fnatic's side as well, keeping them up as they continue to look as if they're going to win this game. Well. Again, there's still a lot of time left available in this game. The late game is still very heavily favored uh, towards Giants. And I think that while Fnatic have good control, 
the fact that the Giants were able to find that pick onto Amazing was was impressive. They utilized good vision control. You can see how much vision they have in the top half of this jungle. And Amazing just wanted to try and drop a ward. Uh, doesn't respect the lack of control uh, that he has over his top side. And this is then just uh, Fnatic not hard engaging to the fight, just playing slowly around it. All they want to do is force Giants off to also take damage from the Baron as well. And then eventually, maybe they can find themselves a pick. They just need to play the flight slow, and then this is just a mistake from Mento. Um, flat out mistake. Shouldn't have gone for blue here, especially with all four members going back to base. Yeah. Poor communication and and greed. This could have been a window for Fnatic to go for Baron. They don't gamble it. Instead, they just take them in tower, and then they disengage. And I think that was the smart decision, because now Kickers can move back off to a side lane. Look at how far ahead he is of Flaxus right now. Yeah. A glimpse of the Void buff giving him extra damage to those towers as well. Takes him down incredibly quickly. Fnatic Academy's team fighting throughout this series has looked a lot stronger. After game one, game two, game two, three, game four has looked a lot better from them. Now, once again, Giant's going to start up the Baron. There's TP available for Kickers and none for Flaxus. So it's all on Flaxus to try and stop the engage from Kickers. Actually, Giant's just back away straight away. There is an Infernal Drake on the cards as well. I think Giants were just trying to bait out the TP from Kickers and then disengage from the Baron because then they would be the ones to have the TP. Yeah. Uh, priority over Kickers. For the time being though, Fnatic don't fall for the bait. Giants, they uh, disengage from the Baron before things get a little bit too hairy. And now they've all gone back to base, that's just gonna give a free dragon over towards Fnatic. That will equalize the Infernal Drakes. Still a mountain in favor of Giants. Ocean Drake kind of falls off the later you get into the game, not as strong. Uh, unless you can maintain sieges without taking too much damage like EQ is. Does get hit up with the wild go. The great shockwave onto Niski. Takes down one. The strangle thorns in as well. EQ's still alive. Flex is dead though. It's a one for one trade night. So low as Mr. Rallis works his way through the front line of Giants. One for one trade. So quick, so explosive. Looked like a huge fight in favor of Giants with the fact that the Shockwave only landed on Taniski and he was the only one to drop with such a healthy Rylaz and a healthy Amazing means that Fnatic Academy are still the ones in the better position. They're posturing around the Baron. It would be very risky to go for that play now. They do have the TP from Kickers. He's gone back. He's full HP. Now Fnatic are actually just going to spot out Giants as they push forward. Memento a little bit overextended here. Rala's taken low. Amazing kicks at Hiku back. Memento trying to dodge around. Hustling's low. Hiku jumps up. Shockwave comes in. Here's Mr. Rala's doing damage as well. And Giants are just on the wrong side of Summoner's Rift. Rala's flashing in. He's going to take down the Lucian just about with the double. And off towards the side. Actually, we see Amazing die as Knight gets. And that's a big, big win for Giants because they have their jungler. And Fnatic Academy do not. And while that one kill from Knight may very well save the Baron from going down for Giants, this is exactly the sort of play that they made earlier on. Fnatic move towards the Baron, they clear out all the vision, then they move back towards that side brush. And they just punish Giants for trying to push up the lane. They end up getting collapsed on. Two members of Giants are dead. Fnatic, they start up the Baron. Knight still has Shockwave, but Memento is dead. Taken out by Niski, and the Baron is falling. It can still have a Wonder Steal. We've seen Shockwave steals before. Here is Flaxus. The Baron going low, though, and Giants are not going to get there. Fnatic Academy take the Baron. They charge in as well. Knight not quite caught out with the ultimate as Fnatic will take themselves an eight thousand gold lead in this game and four members get it amazing wasn't quite back alive to pick up that buff but it does not matter because fanatic can be happy with the objective that they have gotten off the back of that fight good punishment onto giants for overstaying in the mid lane and giants it just comes back to what we've been saying throughout this series their mid-game decision making is not the strongest they just stopped they, they've just actually gone for a pretty positive fight. They yeah. got a really good shockwave combo down onto Niski. And if they could find another fight like this, then you could be pretty happy. Like, look at this trade overall. Niski ends up going down. Like, sure, you end up losing Flaxage, but this is a one-for-one -one trade. This is good. You just disengage, you reset the fight, and then you can look to start posturing around Baron again. Like, the longer this game goes on, the better these fights go, but you overextend in mid. There's also the TP flank coming in. There's no way that Knight is even in a position to help you. And this was just not, uh, exactly the same play the Giants made in Game 3, and they end up getting punched for it, and they lose a Baron, just like they did in Game 3 as well. Mr. Rollers is doing so much work in these fights. In the PSG series, I was slightly worried about his positioning at times. Here, he's 7-0-1 on the Ezreal, and consistently dodging back, kiting back, doing exactly what he needs to do to stay alive in the fight and be that consistent damage threat. Now, we see Fnatic Academy. It's the one and four we talked about once again. Vedius Kickers is going to go mid and four members of Fnatic will stay in this bottom lane. 
I believe they actually have a pushing wave up top as well. Just gonna have a very quick look. Yes, they do. So the slow push is starting in the top side in favor of Fnatic, which means that they will have three pushing lanes. They have Baron 2, which means that they can swiftly rotate between the different lanes and start to knock on all three doors of Giants' base. How much can Giants store? That's what they need to do here. You've got Oriana Clear, Ludens, Voidstaff, Morello Nomicon. You've got the Lucian as well with the Rapid Fire Cannon, the Black Cleaver, the Blade of the Ruin King, and that extra BS Sword just for a little bit of extra AD. That is your wave clear. Nautilus provides you a little bit as well. The question is, can Giants slow down this game enough to stop Fnatic in their tracks? Well, it's going to be difficult. Uh, remember that there's a lot of pick power on the side of Fnatic. It only takes one stun or one kick to give Fnatic the window or in order. One kick -is. Or one kick Or one kick with the charge. Charge! Sorry. Uh, in order to Rip break into the base. Uses. Apologies. <laughs> All right, so here we go. The siege continues from Fnatic Academy. Kick is still sitting off onto a side lane. I don't know if they're going to gamble going for a dive, considering the Orion ultimate, uh, but that's a lot of damage on the flag Here comes Kick is across the wall. Redemption used. He's taken low. The shockwave comes out as well. Memento forced away. Kick is low. Down off Skull. Amazing jumps in to get the kill on Flaxus. The Cullen comes out. Amazing will survive. All of Fnatic get out alive. Very low members there, though, and Giants lose one in Flaxish. I think this is OK for Giants, though, because so many of the members of Fnatic Academy are so low that perhaps with Knight and Memento, this could be enough to deter them, but Fnatic, they're feeling confident. That they are. TP is almost up for Kickers as well. He might rejoin the... Well, he can back and rejoin the fight if he wants to. They have five members. They won't get the inhibitor tower. It's delaying. This is what Giants want. They want to slow this game down because at the moment, they are looking down the barrel of a gun, and that gun is in Mr. Rales' hands. 9,000 gold in the favor of Fnatic Academy right now. Backs against the walls. A win in the promotion tournament means that you only need one more series win to get a spot in the LCS. And this is just Fnatic Academy realizing, okay, the wave clears too much. We have to try and make a play happen. Uh, the shockwave doesn't really land onto anyone. And the big reason why Rallis takes so much damage is he actually ends up tanking the tower because the shockwave doesn't hit anyone. It actually clears the entire minion wave. So damage still was dealt. Uh, but the, the reality is Fnatic, they dived a little bit too deep. Giants were too far into their base for the rest of Fnatic to continue the chase. And if they had, they could have ended up losing more of their members, which would have resulted in Giants getting some shutdown gold and maybe perhaps getting a bit more freedom back into this game, which at the moment, is they're desperate for anything. Mountain Drake on the cards. Fnatic should get this one pretty safely. No possibility of Giants pushing out of their base at the moment. So this is going to be an objective focus dragon for them when they're looking to take down those inhibitor towers. 10% extra true damage will help them out immensely. And it does also mean, of course, the Elder Drake will be spawning next. So we've seen a lot of Elder Drake play. We've seen a lot of Baron play from both these two teams across this series. Fnatic tend to have been the team on the winning side when it comes to those big objectives. Well, they've been getting better as the series progressed. And notice that in this game, uh, I feel like that they actually haven't made really a big mistake that have given a big window for Giants to come back into, other than a really good pick onto Amazing around the Baron. They still played around the Baron exceptionally well. They didn't hard commit, they didn't overextend. They just played a slow, patient game, and they even ended up getting a kill onto Memento. And in this dive bottom, it was really the best scenario that they could do because they couldn't really match with the wave clear. So I feel like Fnatic have become more restrained and been making better decisions as the series progressed. Whereas Giants, they haven't evolved at all. They're still playing exactly the way they did in game one, and Fnatic are taking advantage of that. Well, Giants continuing just to hold out. And I have to, I have to think it, they just need to slow this game down a little bit more. That's what they need to do. And if they can do that, then they'll be able to uh, stop this Fnatic advance. But Fnatic, they, they're used to the late game. They are the kings of the late game. They, relish in the late game when it comes to playing in the Challenger Series. This is a, a much tougher opponent, and actually a lot of people said these are the top two teams coming into this Challenger Series, into this promotion tournament. And I have to wonder, the team that takes a loss here, how much motivation will they lose? They've got a week to reset themselves, but losing out and having to play Origin or Misfits Academy... I don't know, is it really that bad to lose to four former LCS players? Uh, bear in mind the Giants is still a, a roster full of a lot of rookies. Yeah. First split for Flaxish, a first split for Hiku, second split on the LCS for Knight and Memento. And Anento, he didn't really have a full split on Rackhead. He came like half yeah. or towards the end of the split. Um, 
So, uh, and then Huston, obviously, one of the longest standing members of the Giants squad, but like it is still a pretty young team. They haven't made as much growth as they would have liked. We heard Memento earlier on saying that the team didn't really try hard because they felt like they had a lot of potential after their first few wins in the first few weeks of the LCS. And then they realized that they're in a lot of trouble. And right now with being 2-1 down to Fnatic Academy, it could be in more trouble than they would have liked to have been since the start of the beginning of the split. Well, Baron on the cards once again. We still see Kickers pushing up in that bot lane. It feels slow, but this is what Fnatic want. They, they want to just make sure that they're playing this game perfectly. It's also what Giants want, though. Fnatic playing here slightly the charge. into their hand. Here comes the charge, off towards the side. Onto Knight, blocks him up first. No Shockwave yet. Wild Growth used as well. Collateral damage knocks them back. And this means Fnatic are going for the Baron. No vision there for Giants. No awareness at all. Except for that <laughs> far side alteration. But, but now they don't have it anymore. Yeah, it's gone. So the Baron has been started. As you rightly said, Fnatic, they have full control. Can Giants find the answer? That Baron's going down quickly. Niski's in the front line. Baron down to less than half. Here comes Flash is running in. Memento looking for the steal once again, but Amazing kicks him away. Flash is caught up in the strangle thorns. Memento's dead. Amazing takes him out. And Flash is, is so low. Kick is in the front line. Looking for the kill. He just needs to get one more auto down. He's dead. Pocket pistol snipes him away. The shockwave only hits Amazing as Mr. Rales flashes over it. Knight's going to get chased away by Mr. Rales. Hustling's going to get taken down by Kick is and this is Fnatic winning this series. A massive Baron slaughter. Fnatic, they don't even care about the objective. They only want the kills because they've got that nexus in their eyes. 17 kills to six and a 12,000 gold lead. The Challenger Series team defeat the LCS residents. They do still need to take down the Nexus. It's not quite done yet, and Knight and Memento will have something to say about this. And I may have spoken too soon. Giants trying to hold on. The charge in on Knight. Memento knocked back. Nexus Tower, the first target. That's going to go down quickly. They're going for the second. Knight, no shockwave, no stopping. Fnatic's advance. Knight's caught out, not quite taken down, but the Nexus will fall! And Fnatic Academy take it three and one.